what's up guys welcome to the being beautifully on this podcast and channel thanks for being here being subbed if you're not hit the button and if you're listening on youtube hit the like it's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch let's brighten up the place and get into the real of reality tv now we recently talked about the announcement that kenya moore was coming back to the real housewives of atlanta but one of the things that is being discussed is the fact that Drew Sidora may be coming back, but Sheree Whitfield is at risk of being cut out of the show. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If this is indeed the truth, I would be absolutely okay with it. One, because I felt like it was a bit much and also hypocritical for all people, of all people, <laughs> Sheree to be the one to talk about Drew and how much Drew lies. I just felt like, girl, like, have you seen yourself? Have you looked at yourself in the mirror? Have you seen your past seasons? Have you seen <laughs> your website? Have you seen She by Sheree? Have you seen the guy who actually said he was the one that created the, de- the designs and the fashions for your fashion show that you had on the last season? Are we really going there? And two, Drew Sidora, whether people wanted to clown her marriage or talk about the fact that Ralph didn't really seem like he liked her very much or whatever, all of those things could be true, but they indeed really are married. And I feel like she had a real story to tell. And I'm never going to really judge someone that we, even though it's their choice to come onto a reality show, that's why you have to decide when you're going to put your life out for viewers to be able to look at, view, judge, be skeptical of, or whatever, if you're going to be okay with doing that, because people are going to do it whether you like it or not. But it definitely can be also true that you bringing your relationships to television can be an extremely uncomfortable and vulnerable thing, especially when you're not in a good place with your spouse, with your partner. And obviously from the first scene of the first season that she and her husband were on, we could see that they were not in a good place. So I won't judge Drew for not really being up front and forthcoming with some of the things that she was talking about when it came to her relationship because she knew that those ladies were not her real friends and so that's that but I would be okay with her coming back to the next season because I do feel that it kind of left with a cliffhanger and so I feel like at least give her one more season to see how things go you know but Sheree I just feel like they just need to be done with her lies about her being in a relationship with Martel. Because even if that were true, that should have been a killer for her to be coming back to the next season. Because again, like I said, even if that relationship were real, we should be like, why? (laughs) Like out of every man that is breathing on the earth, Or just, let's just boil it down to Atlanta, which he is not even a resident of. He lives in Huntsville, Alabama. And by court order, he's not even supposed to be living out of the state because at this point in time, or at least when they were dating, he was in a joint custody situation with the children that he had from his marriage. So out of all of the males... (laughs) You choose to be in a relationship with this N-word who has been nothing but trash to his ex-wife. And then you try to pawn him off to the public, shine him up, you know, using the handkerchief that you would use on the shoes to shine him up and using them on that head to try to shine him up like a brown penny, making him look like brand spanking new and then bringing him to the general audience of the Real Housewives of Atlanta and pretty much producing and introducing this loser to a myriad of other people who knew nothing about him and bringing him to another audience. That narcissistic psychopath does not deserve to be on anyone's television screen. And so she brought him to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I feel like just for that alone, she should not be coming back. So when I heard that she is 
currently possibly on the chopping block, I'm like, what are you all waiting on? Make it official and let's make the announcement because she doesn't need to come back. Honestly, I just feel like the Real Housewives of Atlanta, even if they don't want to do a complete and full total reboot, if they're bringing Kenya back and they're bringing Portia back, I don't feel that all of the other ones that they had on there, especially Sheree, need to come back. So if she is indeed going to get the axe, I feel like they just need to go ahead and make it official. Now, I did hear that her mother currently is dealing with dementia, and I'm sorry about that, but I don't even feel like that's something that she should be showcasing on television. Even if that is a real life situation that she is going through, you know, she gets my respect And I understand that it can be a hard thing to be a caregiver for someone who is dealing with a disability, but I don't think that this is the place for that, especially being that out of all of these years that she has had the opportunity to come and go, come and go. Like Kenya says, she's the most fired and rehired person on any Housewives franchise ever. I don't feel like this is something that they need to be bringing her back for. Like deal with that in private, take care of your mother like she took care of you and allegedly put her name on your house (laughs) on the chateau but I don't feel that she needs to come back she just doesn't deserve it and I just felt like that storyline that she did last season with Martell was weak it was disgusting and deplorable and especially with the state of affairs with him right now as it stands where he has been charged with revenge P-O-R-N and harassing text messages don't no, don't bring her back. I don't care if she wasn't involved in his shenanigans with that. Just the mere fact that she brought him on the show and then at the reunion tried to dismiss it and also still tried to make it seem like he was a good guy. Well, he's such a good guy and we just have so much fun together. But um, I just there's just a lot of mess around him and I, and I love me more. Well, we love the show more when you're not on it. And I just feel that it's now time to just make it official forever when it comes to her and the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts about everything. And Mia and Gordon, so on this final reunion part, Gordon, he discusses his mental health and the diagnosis that he has been dealing with that they just decided to talk about on the reunion. So I just want to play this clip really quickly. With a mental illness, bipolar one. Wow. And the difference between bipolar and bipolar one is really the degree of manic, okay, that you have. And if there was a bipolar two. It's okay, Mia. If there was a bipolar two or three or four, quite frankly, I would have those. Really? Well, bipolar in and of itself causes your mind to really work opposite. And your mind tricks you into saying you are normal. Everyone else is slow. When were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed near two and a half years ish ago. I bet that explained a lot. What I began to realize is that as early as my early 20s, Mm. I've had this, and I could remember episodes over the course of my life. Here's the thing that's really uh, key to this. My manic got worse over the years as I gained more control, more power, more money. Mm. Now that you've been diagnosed, is there medication that can even you out? Yeah, there's medication, Andy, but what I have learned is that the key to controlling this is not, not... the medication exclusively you have to go the rest of the way yourself so first thing you got to do is understand the behaviors that are the beginning of going into a manic episode Mm -hmm. mania builds Uh uh-huh and then can you see it coming i cannot mia can right i cannot oh wow and if she sees it coming can she say to you gee this is happening correct will you take that in though Prior to our separation, she no. had said that to me a few times, and I didn't listen. Right. When you reached out to the other gentlemen and were texting them about what was happening in your marriage, oh, and you were... And it was exaggerated by my frustration, my anger. 
when you locked Mia in the room. Locked her in the room? You locked her. I took her my cell phone, Gordon. In I the took room. the cell phone. I took her cell phone. I did too. I, I don't remember locking her in the room. Okay. I remember taking a cell phone. Part of what happens when you're in mania, you really don't remember everything. Yes. So I'm not saying I didn't, but I don't remember locking her in the room. But I did take the cell phone. Do you believe that she was having an affair during the marriage? Yes. Duration of it? No. Okay. Let me let me just say this. Yes. Mia has been absolutely wonderful. And you may say, why do you say that when this other stuff was happening? First off, whatever's gone on, I forgive her, and she's forgiven me. Okay. I fully believe, had I gotten control of this manic behavior sooner, Mia would still be with me. Mm. I don't think she left me because she wanted to be someplace else. Mm -hmm. She left me because she couldn't take this anymore. Right. <clears throat> Can I teach you? Okay. Yeah. There you go, buddy. <sighs> Excuse me. You okay? Yeah. It is what it is. <clears throat> Things got so bad and so low for me, I went to the hospital and checked myself in. Wow. The next morning, guess who was there? Mia. She showed up the next That's morning. That's really amazing. Make sure that I, you know, had everything I need. Left and went to get me a change of clothes. Yeah. My, my place was 70 miles away. She came to see me, I believe, every day but one wow. while I was there. It sounds like she's taking care of you. It seems, Mia, like you you are you have been committed to making sure that he's okay. You're now exiting, so I'm just I'm worried about Gordon. Like what? What's yeah, the, what's so the forever? Yeah, forever. You're always gonna be. I'm forever gonna, gonna, yeah, gonna, be, I'm forever gonna like, take care of Gordon, so to speak. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I appreciate you saying that, but I'm telling you, I am good now. I understand my mental illness. I understand how to control it now. It's brave of you for being so open about this. Thank you. That okay, guys. This one is really tough for me, but I'm just going to share my thoughts, and that's all I can do. I do not have his medical diagnosis in front of me to read. I do not see a list of his prescriptions that he is taking. I don't have any of that knowledge. And honestly, it is none of my business. I get that. But I'm just going to say that this really is hard for me to believe. It really is. I'm, of course, say saying this and sharing my thoughts based on what they have showcased on the show that we have been able to see. And I'm sorry. I don't believe. I don't believe. I'm not saying that he doesn't have a mental disorder. But I just feel that he and Mia, they have a lot in common. And if you remember Mia and her claiming the medical issues and all the other stuff, and then it just turned out to be like, I don't even remember what it was. But with all of that being said, a lot of what they do, it's based out of convenience. When she and he were discussing the possibility of splitting up, he was suggesting, well, let's just say separated and you know, but stay married and, you know, we can still hook up from time to time and, you know, financially, I'll still be there for you and whatever. Like, I'm just saying that I feel that a lot of what is being said and a lot, not just him and Mia, we see a lot of this in today's times where people will use mental health and mental health diagnoses allegedly as an excuse for the actions that they take and really in all actuality has nothing to do with that and it really is a true slap into slap in the face to those who really are genuinely dealing with these things and this is a, such a huge issue why wait until the reunion to talk about this instead of just making it look like it has looked all along where they just had this messy marriage he got with her when he was he hooked up with her when he was already married to his previous wife she was a stripper but she claimed she was not a stripper she wore ball gowns and and just was pretty much like sitting next to men at the club giving them good conversation while they ate steak and lobster you know what i mean like it's just a lot of things that i just don't believe 
when it comes to these two. And I know a lot of people are wanting to really, you know, give the tears and the sympathies and all of that stuff for these two because of what was shared. But in my personal opinion, I'm just not really buying it. That's just me. Everyone has the right to feel how they feel and believe what they want to believe. But when it was being said and just be, and everyone is different. So I'm not going to sit here and base it off of people that I know in my own life, personal experiences to compare, but all other things being considered and, you know, based on what we have seen to me, it's just not really believable. I'm sorry. That's me. But I would really love to know what you guys think. I'm just saying, I just don't really believe it based on everything else that has been divulged and exposed. Something as important as this, and he has been dealing with this. It wasn't like after everything was filmed and they were on the break, she convinced him to go and see a mental health doctor and he was diagnosed with bipolar one. And now, you know, like, I'm sorry. I, I just don't, I just don't buy it. He was very eloquent when he was having a conversation with her about her being with the other guy and talking about what Jeremiah said to him. And he was saying, you know, if you want fair, go to a carnival. I'm, I'm just, again, all I can do is share it based on the things that they have shown to us on the show. And I'm just not really buying it, but that's me. I'd love to know what you guys think about it. And I get it. You have to really be careful when it comes to people and and health alone. I hate when it's just mental health because like I said, mental health is health. It's dealing with your brain. Your brain is a body part. You know, sometimes we may hear heart health or we may hear breast health or, you know, bone health, whatever. Sometimes they'll put the body part with that word health, but more often than not, it's just health. But when it comes to the issues of the brain, which is where the mind is embodied, people just hear mental health and a lot of people don't take it seriously, but it is serious because it's dealing with the body part, which is the brain. So I'm definitely one that advocates for it and takes it extremely seriously. But I know, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who manipulate and who will use it because it's something that's a little bit more convenient to deal with and to use and a lot of people are not going to really dig in to see if you're really being honest about that. So I don't know. But guys, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section about all of this. So thanks, guys, so much for being here. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and now I'm going to say bye.